Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna look at some iSCSI how to connect your VMware ESXi 6.0 to your iSCSI storage a couple of videos I've been doing on first I made a virtual Synology Exponology box and put on a virtual machine over here and then a couple of videos later I made this server number 5 up here and that's a hardware Synology box and that has 6 disks and there are each 2 terabytes and they're in a RAID SHR Synology RAID and today I want to connect my hosts my VMware ESXi host to that box. It could be that box or it could be the virtual box that I already did also. I have both of them still. There's a big advantage to get some iSCSI storage and that is that you can have more servers seeing the same storage and when you have more servers seeing the same storage you can actually move the virtual machine from one host to another host and that's very useful. So we're gonna go see at the computer how you connect your host to iSCSI storage and we're gonna be using the Synology that we did in a couple of videos back so let's go to the computer and see that okay where we were at last let's just log in here to the IPM out there there we are and uh, last time I created a disk group let's just see that we have the six disks here and we created a disk group and it's here it's nine terabytes uh, used a little bit okay let's create a volume let's not use all of it we're just gonna custom volume and multiple volume and range yes and we're gonna put it on disk group one yes next and we're gonna say this volume is gonna be two gigabytes Zero four eight. That's two gig. That's oh two terabytes. Sorry, that volume is gonna be two terabytes. Next, so we create that next, and that has been created. It says out here, cre crafting, creating file system, and creating activating volume so it takes a little bit optimizing file system oh that will probably take forever but i would guess that we can continue with this when we create a volume we should get some more options in the iSCSI and here we create our iSCSI LONs and what an iSCSI LON is it's actually just it's a disk area for a VMware host, the VMware host will see this disk area as a part of uh, its own hard drive. Something that is just for it. You can have, it can have a private one or it can have a shared one. But let's see what we get if we want to create one. Then we get, we can create a regular one here. Because when, when I created a volume, we can put it on that. Or we can choose this one down here, which is an iSCSI loan directly on the disk group without there being a volume on top of that. Let's just try this one up here. That would be kind of the normal thing to do. Now we have a two terabyte volume for that. So we're gonna call it loan one. Let's call it Playhouse, my Playhouse. House, zero one. We're gonna put it on the available volume, yes, please. Uh, thin provisioning, yes, uh, sure. We can set some some file sizes here. I think we will choose this eight kilobytes, which is optimized for VMware. Thank you. This capacity, let's just say that uh, until further notice, this disk will be 100 gigabytes next here we can choose it creates a new target for us and the target is the thing that the vmware host will connect to and the target will connect to the lon that we have made we have the option here of giving it a password if we check this we can put in a username and a password for security i'm gonna try not to do that 
and just choose next. And we get a summary and apply. Hopefully we get a nice green. Yes. Here we have a very nice My Playhouse LUN. Let's go to the VMware and see if we can connect to that. I'm just going to make a note of the IP number up here, which is number 21. So we'll go to VMware. I have my vCenter open right here. And I have a server here. You don't need a vCenter to do this, but every host has the ability to add a iSCSI adapter. It's this one here. I should really delete this, but well, I already have some disks and I have some virtual machines out here. And if I just remove the disk, I have to add all that stuff again. So if you don't have this, and you probably don't, if you haven't played with this before, you don't have this, you press add and it's pretty much the only thing that you can add there. Just add it and there's an iSCSI software adapter and you add it and it's there. After that, <laughs> this is kind of too easy because it's already, it came up down here. I didn't even have to do anything, but if it doesn't pop up there, you go to the properties and you have two options over here. You can add it dynamically. You can press add here and you can punch in the IP number and that would be this one. That one, right? Don't need to do that when it's already because over here at the static discovery, it already found that I had something, something new popped up on the network. So it added it, which was, well, way too easy. But well, I guess I shouldn't complain, right? So close that. So it's here. So let's see if we have some storage here. We have nothing here. So add storage. And we have a disk LAN and we can we can connect to disks. And there is iSCSI right there. So let's see if, voila. We have a 100 gigabyte iSCSI drive right there. Let's add that. And it's not formatted, so we can do that. Uh, we have the VMFS5, which is the newest one, or at least the newest one right here. We could also use the tree for legacy, but well, I don't have anything legacy, I hope. No. Nope. So let's just use the five right there. And it's... Good, hard disk is blank, check. And we can give it a name, we'll just call it Synology. Exponology. Exponology, I think that's okay. One. Next. Maximum of, yes. Blah, 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 blah. Finish. So I should get one, I don't know where, oh, it put it right there. So I have a hundred gigs of disk space right there. And we get a nice little graph of it here. So now I can actually, I could take a server uh, and move it to another storage location if I needed to do that. And I could open it up from there. Or I can go to another host. Let's see, here we have another host there. And that doesn't have that storage either. So we're gonna go to configure. And uh, that's not it. A storage adapter. See, I've also added the iSCSI adapter there. That one hasn't got the Synology yet, so let's prompt. See, it hasn't found it. So let's try the dynamic and add it. Uh -huh. Let's see if it finds that one. There, pops up. Close. It wanna rescan. Yes. It says it's completed. It didn't pop up down here. Let's see if it's, it's not under storage either. Is it done over here? Here it is, okay. Now it's found both of them. The Synolid or the, the IBM X3650, it has two network cards, so both of these are valid uh, on the static. I only added the one on the dynamic, but well, right now, it does not allow that. 
so, but if we go over here to the to the exponology client or web interface here, we can go to the iSCSI target right there, and we can see that multiple sessions is disabled. So we can only connect to this iSCSI LAN at the moment with one session. That's one host. But if we go up to edit and advanced, we can allow multiple settings for more than one iSCSI indicator. So we're going to check that. Yeah. And there is a warning to a uh, to avoid risk of significant data corruption, please make sure you are operating in a clustered system, whatever. Yes. So it's doing something, 20%. I guess in a little bit we can probably go back here. Let's do a rescan. Yes. See if they pop up now. There we are. We have it right there. So we go back to our storage over here, and we add storage, and we add iSCSI LUN right there. Does it pop up? There we are. Oh, that's not it. Wonder where that came from. Oh, yeah, it did pop up, but that's not it. That's it. So now it's available on this server, and up here on that server. This means that I can now transfer virtual machines from one host to another host because they have some common storage which is running on another server the x3650 model 1 with the six disks out there and this is rather cool and here we can we can see the iSCSI the two hosts that has been connected 211 right there and 232 right there and once more there, I have no idea what that is, but it's connected. And we can we can see that we can actually we can put some files on there if we wanted to. Let's go let's browse data store from that machine. We can just upload something to it. Upload file. Let's just upload this thing. Open. Uploading. So now that's available there. And we can go down to the other server here and right click on that one and it's right there so if this was an ISO file I would also have that available on two servers now. That looked very easy but well I cut out hours of messing up and it's my old fault so if you just do as I did no problem. You don't have to do your own stuff, you can also just get a real Synology box. It works just as good on these. Uh, this one is a, a bit old and slow, but you can get new ones and they're really awesome machines. I have one at home, uh, at my apartment, and it works really great. Thank you for watching my videos, do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Remember to like it down here, I like that. Have a nice day, bye bye!